So here we're getting into um, applying some of the knowledge. Question 14, it says, match the boiling points of, to the substances that they belong to. All right. So here are the substances, there are the boiling points. Um, of course, these should be subscripts, but uh, that's understandable. All right. So we're looking at these five different substances. And right off the bat, you can see um, one major difference that separates them into two different categories. All right. Nonpolar, polar. Nonpolar, polar. Nonpolar. All right. Um, it may not be very polar, but this is completely nonpolar. All right. So these ones that are nonpolar, all right, they are uh, they have very few interactions. Uh, all they have really are London dispersion. Okay. Um, so between those three, we know they're going to be on the low end of the spectrum, and these two, they're going to be higher. All right. So if we look at these. The lowest three are down here, right? So those three must belong to those, and then these two higher ones belong to one of those. So now it becomes a question of um, size or weight, rather, because the heavier the molecule is, the more energy it takes to get it excited enough to boil it away into the liquid, into the uh, vapor state, all right? So, um, <clears throat> so you're just looking um, at which one of these is the heaviest. Chlorine, of course, is the heaviest, so it's going to have the highest boiling point of those three, um, and, uh, and then oxygen is next, and then nitrogen is the lightest, so nitrogen is going to be down here, um, and so that one is C, um, and then we have oxygen, and then chlorine, which is uh, E, okay, and um, same principle involved here. We can look at the size of phosphorus versus nitrogen. Nitrogen is the top row, so it's lighter. Phosphorus will be heavier. This one will have the highest boiling point of all. And then B um, comes in between. All right. Question 15. Match each substance with its melting point. All right. So here are a variety of substances. And again... We're looking at this, we just like we did here, we look what distinguishes these, all right? And we separated those nonpolar ones from the polar ones, and that helped us. So here, you notice that same, same trend with these three. We have nonpolar, all right? Now, what else do you notice, okay? Diamond is kind of in a class all by itself, but over here, we have three... Um, uh, ionic compounds, all right? So ionic, nonpolar, and then we have this organic one that's kind of thrown in there, and diamond. Those ones are the kind of random ones. But uh, we know diamond is a network solid, all right? So that's going to have a very high boiling point. For sure, it looks like that one matches it. So that's a giveaway. Diamond is right up there extremely high um, melting point, okay? Um, so, just as before, these nonpolar ones, they're going to be very low, very low uh, melting points. And then the ionic compounds, they're pretty high. Of course, not as high as diamond, but they're quite high in the hundreds of, of degrees. But even if you don't have an idea of of uh, the actual melting temperature, you know that they're very high because of that strong ionic um, attraction between them. That's stronger than the dipole, dipole, or even hydrogen bonding. Um, and that's the most that you're going to get out, out of this organic compound. All right. So, and we don't know its structure, but 
you know, at best, it's a polar compound. It'll have hydrogen bonding, um, you know, potentially. And um, so, so we know that this, it's going to be in between these ones, which are very low, and then these ionic ones, which are pretty high. Okay, so let's look at what we have. Well, here are three that are very high, and then here are three that are very low, and there's the one in between. All right, so the one in between is our aspirin. The three up here belong to the three ionic compounds, and the three down here belong to the three nonpolar compounds. So then, just like we did here, you're going with the um, molar mass, and the heaviest one will have the highest uh, melting point. Okay, so um, bromine, chlorine, or fluorine. All right, fluorine is the uh, smallest, the lightest, and then chlorine and bromine. Okay. So here's our fluorine. It's the lowest. All right. Um, it doesn't take much energy at all um, to uh, to get it to melt. All right. So that's going to be uh, the lowest there. And then moving up, we have chlorine is is next heaviest out of those three. And so that's the one that's going to be coming next, and then bromine. Okay, so as you get heavier, it requires more energy to um, to break the attractive forces uh, between them because it's it takes more to get something heavy moving. All right. Now here uh, you'll notice that these three are all positive one, negative one charges, right? So we're not looking at the charges, we're looking at the size, okay? So lithium fluoride, definitely the smallest. Sodium chloride, that's next. And then potassium bromide is the largest, okay? So lithium fluoride is the smallest. That means the um, ions can get closer together which means the attractive force between them is greater, okay? Which means it takes more energy to melt lithium fluoride than the others, all right? So that one's going to be up at the top. Then we have in between is the sodium chloride. And finally, we have the potassium bromide is the largest, of those three, um, and so they're further. The ions are further apart; they can't get as close. The um, lattice enthalpy will be less, and it'll take more energy to. Um, I'm sorry; it will not take as much energy to overcome the uh, attraction between those because they can't get as close to each other. All right, so that is last remaining one there. All right. Now, question 16. Checks, check the box next to each of the following that exhibit hydrogen bonding. Okay, so remember the rules, um, what is necessary for hydrogen bonding. Um, you have hydrogen, but it has to be on an electronegative atom. Carbon is not an electronegative atom. Here we don't even have hydrogen, so that was kind of just a uh, freebie there. <laughs> Here the hydrogen is bonded to an electronegative atom. Um, and then what's the other thing that we need? A lone pair of electrons, and nitrogen provides that for us um, as well. Okay, so NH3 will. How about acetone? No hydrogens attached Here's an electronegative atom, but there's no hydrogens on it. They're only attached to the uh, to the carbons, which are not. Um, there's not enough of a, an electronegativity difference there to initiate hydrogen bonding. 
so acetone will not. And acid anilid. Um, these hydrogens will not because they are on a carbon atom. However, this hydrogen is on a nitrogen, very electronegative atom. All right. So then the other thing is, is there an available lone pair of electrons? Well, yes, there are actually a few. We have some here on the oxygen, and then there's another pair on that nitrogen. So acid anilid will also exhibit hydrogen bonding.